Well, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of Women in Tech Global Event, celebrating International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great guest here, Isabella groger Jezovich, who is the Vice President of Worldwide Public Sector EMEA Sales for AWS Amazon Web Service, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Isabella, thanks for spending the time and coming on this, uh, this program uh, for International Women's Day. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on that one. It's an exciting topic, John. A lot of things going on, a lot of themes. Um, we'll get into that. But first, tell us about your career and how you got to be working at AWS. Yeah, that, that's, that's really, interesting story, I would say. I, I give you first of all the, the headline. I am a dental technician by training. I am business administration economics by study. Um, and I spent my really whole life in tech. So my first message here is that you can have a great career path in tech having a diverse background. Um, what you need really is to be curious and to be eager to learn. And you see that I have slightly tweaked our leadership principle saying learn and be curious on that one. But when you agree on that one saying, I am curious, I want to learn, this is really a great place in technology and in AWS to be in and to progress a career. It's really, really cool. And when I look ahead, I see that because the industry lines are blurring more and more, they are more and more diverse skill sets, diverse roles coming in. And that is really opening an exciting opportunity also for women, but also in a broader sense of diversity to go and, and have a career in technology. It is quite exciting. Back to my career, I started in a in a company. I think when I look back at that and reflect, it was a startup these days, very, very early in parallel computing, moved on then into management consulting, into, into international consulting project and managing those ones. And when I look at that piece, I have built out at that point exactly my industry skills. And that was beginning in the oil and gas industry. When I then transitioned in a bigger corporation into the ERP space, that also continues on a global scale. And then eventually I switched over and, um, and started to go deeper into another industry segment, which was the public sector. And when you come from oil and gas, that is a transition that comes to national oil companies. So that just a sort of naturally came, but gave me an absolutely different scope. So 16 years in oil and gas, and then processed into public sector. Now, in my last global role, I really get across the whole discussion about cloud. And this is why I got also in touch with AWS, um, talking about, wow, this is the future. This is really the way of how computing is going to be consumed in future and how agile those types of, an, of a model is. And that was really super intrigued. Also, uh, having a, a sort of a really startup mentality and this is, and here I am, as this is responsible for, for EMEA in public sector. Well, I love the throwback to parallel com computing. I remember those days, uh, exciting story. And I love the point about a lot of opportunities with tech. There's so, the aperture of technology has really widened the surface area yes. for things you can do and bring a diverse background to is really amazing. Great point, great insight. I have to ask you, um, what first got you interested in working in the tech sector? How did you get attracted to the parallel computing? Um, what was the gravitational pull? Was there a moment of, uh, of luck, serendipity? What happened? Tell us uh, the, how, how you got interested in the tech sector. John, I wish I would tell you now a story that this was the wow moment, <laughs> right? Where I came across something and that sparked the idea. Can I tell you a secret? So when I started my study, the, 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 the thing that I said or the statement I made was it's just, I want to work in everything, but not in IT. <laughs> uh, this is, and, and maybe, maybe that is how the brain process. So the brain process, I want to work in IT. 
And this is how I got into it. No, but seriously, I think the first part was I got my business degree, but I got it from a technical in university. This is why I come, came, first time came across that in a broader sense. Would I say, is it late or is it early? I don't think so. That was for me at the right time. That was mechanical engineering, engineering and IT. I've also built a couple of theses around that part. That was the first one. And certainly when I get into this company, that was on parallel computing at that time an underdog being responsible for optimization models for refineries I sort of transitioned into that one so coming really from a technical university background being on a daily basis with that and being in in this in these topics um, all the time and also thinking about how could I progress that way and also having my first engagement with the company um, in that space that got me intrigued and stuck into the startup space, um, not calling it a startup those days, but also in the technology side. And I think the, the farms have been still cool if I look back on that one. You know what's interesting also, about that story is, is that you were in an environment that was technical and nerdy. And we're seeing that now people are, uh, we had a leader on AWS that I interviewed. She said, we're nerd native. The younger generation is natively mm -hmm. nerdy and they're in, they got tech, they're touching it everywhere. They're in think zones, they're in think tanks and build their, building things. So this is, this is the new situation. So, you know, this is kind of where we're going. So the next question I have for you is, um, how do we encourage uh, young women and girls to get a career in tech. Are there initiatives that you guys have? I know Get IT initiative that ADBIS runs is one. Um, how do we get this, this word out that it's all in front of us, that the environment is, is, is rich to Look, bring careers yeah. in together? Yeah, and, and, and I think to your point, you can't start early enough on that one, right? So I can say it, it, ha it has been a different touch points, but I think I also had an inspiration earlier where I really thought about, yeah, I can do everything, right? So from that perspective, that paves the way into a looking at I can equally proceed different career passes, but you touched on the get IT side, and I really, really love that initiative that that we as AWS have put together. And I've been a judge on that one, and it's amazing results that have been driving that. So the the initiative has an an, an a defined frame. It is encouraging girls in the age of 12, 13, um, and also then, but but potentially also then later going and considering a career in tech. Um, with that one, it, it brings these challenges that, that teams are solving for specifically, for example, schools are taking problems on that they're going to frame and set up into a, in a sort of a mini startup mode, thinking about what is the business case? How do I go from a detailed plan, but also still keep a big picture in mind and then bring it forward into a pitch? This is a, a very, very round of and defined program that we have set up and it really very it, it sparks very very great not very but but great ideas in the sense of it sparks the ideas for for really how those problems can be can be solved um in those communities and potentially beyond beyond what i really love about it is it fosters diversity you think about it it's not only just for, for girls or it's not for younger women, but it is diverse teams. So they are, from a diversity perspective, it brings different perspectives into it and is, in, and is solving those problems for com communities or challenges for communities. So since we started that one, we have, tr we have had a very, very strong participation in the UK, for example, from 136 schools and I think over 13,000 students. And we are now rolling this initiative also out to other countries in Europe. And I had the pleasure to participate in the one in, in Germany. So I think that that was really an outstanding experience. And it really brings that top of mind again and again, thinking, thinking about no matter what your background is, just go and solve problems for your school, for your community, get people together, get diverse perspective and get things going. I love that example. It's a great story because it, it also allows people to 
get their hands on some technology, experiment, break stuff, fix it, get building at the young age. But also the theme this year is breaking the bias, right? So, you know, when yes. you get to the younger ages, the bias can be worked on there. This is a great example of that. Is that um, have an impact there as well? Yeah, I, I think so very much. It is you have you have those teams that are naturally then working around the problem, and they are really absolutely focused on the topic. They are absolutely focused on solving a challenge, and I think that really brings this the the diversity of perspective together. And in that context, the teams are also looking at. It, what we what we have in 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 our organization what makes really that strong culture which are the leadership principles right so we are this this is a a in, invent and simplify this is a a build trust very much just just deal respectfully with other people but also be able to discuss have you a strong opinion but then also agree on a direction so i think it really brings that to the topic and by that broadens the base of the collaboration great organic diversity from day one as they say in amazon phrase but let's take speaking of amazon phrases and leadership principles one of the things that we hear uh, Andy Jassy talks about this all the time, but now Adam Slefsky talks about it as well. He's the new CEO of AWS, um, uh, is to be the world's best employer, right? So, you know, one of the things is the diversity, inclusion, and equity part of the equation. And, and of course, they're, they're putting stories out like this is a great, great service, and we're happy to be uh, working with them on this. So why is diversity, and inclusion, and equity such an important part of this leadership principle uh, for Amazon and the world. Can you share your thoughts and, and share the, the uh, urgency and <laughs> imperative of why this is a big deal? Look, I, I think now, first of all, we need to acknowledge that we, we are all diverse, right? And we can by default say that. So we are bringing all this diverse views. We are bringing a lot of diverse perspective when we are joining a company, when we are talking to other people. In each and every interaction, we are expressing our diversity. And, and we, we, we as AWS believe that when technology is delivered, it should be in a way that, be, that it should be built in a way that is first of all, diverse, it is equitable, and it is inclusive. Um, and we have the responsibility to make that happen. And we also have, as an organization, the responsibility to take the way, way on, to understand what does it take to get there and to get the commitment out to make sure that we bring more diverse perspective. Um, it, it, we bring more diverse perspective. It, it, we, we foster those ones and we build on that. We never stop on looking at bringing more and more diversity in. That's one. I think um, we are as AWS committed to a diverse workforce for one reason, and that is our customers are diverse, the challenges are diverse. So delivering the best solution needs a diverse perspective. This is where the best of innovation comes together when you have people that can discuss, but those people also feel safe to express themselves and to have their voice heard. So that's the second part to it is, it's the customer focus and we are extremely customer obsessed, but on the other hand, it is also the question about we do it for our people because we want and that comes then back to your point John also on the on the leadership principle we want our people to feel the belonging into the organization this is where they are in their safe point this is where they deliver at their best also for our customers and where they feel that they are part of the organization and when you take diversity equity and inclusion together the outcome of of all of three is um is belonging so we want to to really drive that to make sure that we we drive more aspects of that diversity into the organization. So we bring a broad basis of, of our colleagues um, into, into the organization and make their work voice heard. That's now that's that's one hang on and then we uh, we 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 want actively recruit women 
into to drive this gender diversity specifically as well. When we look, for example, at, at EMEA, um, and we are going to colleges, we are going to, to events, we are going to conferences, and we want to really offer the, the benefits for, for our industry leading, for example, parental leave, mentorships, and sponsorship programs, which help women to develop their careers, to, to really focus on that one. So I think it is striving for being the earth's best employer by bringing those top industry programs to life to make sure that each and every diverse personality can find a space at AWS and run at the best for the best of our customers. Yeah, that's a great point. The world's diverse, the customers are diverse, and the if you put the three words together, they're all equally important. You got to include everyone, got to be diverse. Everyone has, has to have equity. That is a community. That's about what community is about. And, and we're now doing seeing more community focus than ever before in today's world. This is super important. Quick follow up on that, um, the role of community. What's your vision on community? Because people want to belong to something. They want to be part of a tribe, there's a community. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying, I think when you, to, to your point again, to reinforce that, when you bring the three words together, you get this community feeling, you get the belonging. I think it's also the question of a strong culture. You, 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 the ability to, to offer a cultural framework that people can identify with, where they see that the breadth and depth of their skills and all the people around the globe can can be folded in, I think this is massive. And this is extremely powerful to bring that to, to life and to, to be able to offer this to, to our colleagues that are working at AWS, but also beyond. That is a universal, universal message that we can spread. Yeah, and I got to say, um, uh, props to Amazon and AWS, and and we're investing at the Cube. We're going to doing more of these interviews. The, this is a force multiplier. I think uh, diversity, inclusion, and equity is a force multiplier, competitive advantage. The product gets better. The people are happier. It's just a wonderful thing. So I really appreciate uh, the, the the insight and, and points on that. That's a great great uh, segment. Lastly, though, we're speaking with a number of inspiring women. You're one of them. Thanks for joining us uh, as part of celebrating International Women's Day. I'd like to ask you. Um, who inspires you? Look, there there are so many. Just I, I think we are we are living in a world where you get the inspiration from very very many sources. But if I drive that back to what has shaped my career, what has shaped my path, I would say that they are they are two main data points. The first one is I, I I'm really going back to my dad when I went back to him and says that, what eventually can I do? He just looked at me and said, do whatever you want. And this is how I really went into life, rolling up the sleeves saying, okay, that, yeah, well, let's go there, right? So it, it inspired me to, to, to look at the positive side and to always take it from an opportunity perspective, to, to go and do whatever I wanted to do, what I thought is interesting for me and where I have been really curious and wanted to learn more about. And that is one. And the other one, um, besides the, the all the frameworks that we, for example, have at AWS, the leadership principles, our culture of, of um, diversity, but also our culture of, of, um, of, of discussion, high debate. And those types are super, super inspirational when it also comes for me to driving the next level of, of getting, getting everybody on the same page. Um, I had an, a discussion with one of my former skip managers, uh, skip level managers, and um, the, the sentence that he has formed that is stick, still sticks with me is, I was looking at the next career point. And we have been discussing that back and forth. And he's, he was always asking me the same question. So what do you want to do next? And I gave him an answer. He never answered, he just walked away. And I did that two times and I eventually figured out that it's probably not what he really wanted to hear. And it, when we started to go into a discussion, he he pointed me to a to a to a to a, to a fact or to a direction that he said, do you want to wait for dead man's slippers? 
And this is a sentence that just, you don't really under, need to understand that in breath and depth. But if you think about the picture, just like this, there is the old chair, and then you have the dead man's slippers. Is that something, this is something where I always think myself back and forth, I'm thinking, what, what, which point I, am I at? And is that eventually also a point where I would say this is a dead man's slippers um, transition point? And this is what inspired me of thinking about the next career points, staying agile and also staying, staying always curious and learning. So going to that next level is about pushing yourself and really rethinking and going after things that may be aspirational but attainable at the same time. But understanding that role sounds like that was a growth opportunity. Yes, it was a growth opportunity. It, it, it never comes to the to the point where you're going to say, "I'm going to now." That's it, right? I have learned everything. It <laughs> is a. I'm going to step out. It's going to be outside my comfort zone. Am I ready to do that? And is that the right point for me? And I think it's it, the answer to that one is always yes. This is how you stay, stay, keep up with technology, but you keep up also with all the fantastic opportunities that 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 the life and also the the environment, like for example, AWS offer. Isabella, thank you for coming on and sharing the story. One last question I'll ask you is. What's next for you? What do you want to do next? Your worldwide public sector executive leader for Europe, Middle East and Africa for AWS, hot company. The regions are everywhere. There's more regions, there's local zones. Everything's happening. It's expanding. You're in the middle of it. What's next for you? I want to see cloud being the driver of innovation and, and business dynamics and business model change. And I want to be part of this business model change that is based on cloud in future for the benefit of public sector and all the other entities. And also very much for the, for the benefit of all citizens around the globe. That's my next. Well, it sounds like it's going to be very diverse, inclusive and highly equitable. And I want to be part of that, want to belong to that. Thank you for sharing and looking forward to more conversations. And thank you for spending the time to come on theCUBE's uh, presentation here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. Okay, theCUBE presentation, Women in Tech, global events celebrating International Women's Day. This is the first episode, there'll be more. We're going to get more and more stories out, but March 8th is a big day we're celebrating today. International, I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.